Now, I didn't even realize, but we have a new stadium being built. Yeah. Started in 2027. We are now in 2029, of course, two years ago, and we should have it for our final season, which is amazing. We're building a new stadium in progress. We can't actually see what is like the actual stadium specifications yet, obviously, because I simulate quite a lot of this where I holiday. I miss all the notifications, which obviously would have told me about that. But hey, that's great news. And if we go on to the landmarks, we actually had a new chairperson come in that month. And that is when they decided to build a new stadium when we won La Liga that season. So there we go. Some fantastic stuff. We're really taking this club to the next level. We just need to get a European trophy, really. Or, or the big one. We need to get the, the UEFA Champions League trophy because we've got, obviously, the Europa League, uh, one of the first seasons that we were here. So it is season number nine now. We have just two seasons left before we end our journey. And remember, Patreon members, you will get access to this after the 10 years, should you wish to carry on or just have a little dive through the series itself. So we're at the 1st of September. Yeah, now finances, we got 47 million pound in the bank. We're looking good and we have 26 million pound in the transfer budget. But you can see our original budget was 52 million. So finally, all of our fingers have been crossed for so long, we're making some big signings. Well, let's take a look. First name in the door is Leon Goretzka. Yes. I mean, he is world class at the beginning of Football Manager. Nine seasons in, though, he's 34 years of age. He's still amazing, and he has the most player traits I think I've ever seen on a midfielder, but I'm very happy to bring Leon Goretzka in there. He's one of the midfielders that I absolutely adore on this game, and look how many positions he can play. The best thing about this transfer was that he was a free transfer. We signed him after he left Bayern Munich. Uh, he played all of the games last season, 32 out of the 34 league games. Didn't sign a new contract, and the Perfect director of football, Mark Ferher, snapped him up on a free transfer. He's by far and wide one of the best midfielders on the game, especially at the start and still now because, I mean, there's only two attributes there in the mental department that isn't a 15 and they are 13 and 14. I mean, pff, he's insane. He's very good, very well run and we can play him in any different play a role that we wish to play him in. However, he's not the only sign and we have spent some money in bringing Kaiki to the club. 25 years of age, he's in his prime, and he is a very good centre back to add to our also very good defence, in my opinion. It's not amazing, it's just very good. 25 years old, like I mentioned, he's now worth around about 48 million. We picked him up for 42. Another ex Bayern Munich player, he's also played for Chelsea for a few seasons, never really played. We actually could be the first team to give him a first season because. He's only started 21 maximum games in Europe after 45 in Santos, but we spent £42 million on him. It's a lot of money, isn't it? But Mark Verhurst obviously sees something in him. Um, I do like his player traits to switch the ball to the wide areas, refrains from taking long shots. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Obviously, he's terrible at long shots. I mean, he's a defender, so he shouldn't be taking them anyway. But still, it's a good signing. Tactically then, I did mention how I might tone down the discipline. I'm not going to do that yet. But what I mean is we can see here every single player role has tackle harder on there. Uh, for instance, to win the ball back and be a bit more aggressive. And of course, a lot of people have been saying in the comments, that might be the reason why discipline levels at the very end of competitions have been costing you, for instance, in the European Cup final. So we have this tackle harder select selection here, but it also could be the reason why we're getting to the final because we're being so aggressive on the ball. We might not be as talented as some of the teams we're coming up against, but because we have tackle harder, we're working the hardest, working hard, gets you places at the end of the day. Now, we've only played two league games at the start of the season. One was a 3-1 loss to Barcelona. Gavi, Pedri and Ansu Fati scoring. Ivan Nielsen scored after coming off the bench. However, our next match was against Sevilla in what an, an amazing performance that we actually had as well. Leon Goretzka gets his first goal for us. That run from centre mid was absolutely glorious. And every single player on the pitch got at least a seven rating. They did have a red card after that first goal from Scott McTominay, who now plays in Sevilla. Jeremy Pino also picks up a hat trick. There was his first, a back post header. But Leon Goretzka again involved, playing through to Luca. Jeremy Pino fires it in. It looked like he hit it too early. He should have maybe laid it off, but it didn't matter. It flew into the top corner. Pino again gets another assist. Lorenzo Luca 
doing this one. I love it. It's a great celebration with the goal. Leon Goretzka again involved. Barona down that left hand side. We highlighted him in the last episode. A fantastic cross for the right back coming in at the back post. It's five goals all in the second half. Jeremy Pino to round off his hat trick in the 92nd minute with a wonderful free kick. Absolutely insane. But yeah, they had zero shots and zero shots on target and we had 41 with 15. That is the best performance I have ever seen on Football Manager in a league game and it's against Sevilla. I can quite honestly say that's the best performance I've ever seen. 61% possession, 41 shots to zero. Absolutely incredible. So competitions wise then, our Champions League group, we have a fairly tricky one because Monaco can be a tricky team. Obviously they usually finish second behind PSG and they find themselves in our group with Bayern Munich and Slavia Prague. So I like to think we can still qualify for it. I'd like to think we should be able to beat Monaco, especially at home with our defense being as good as what it has been recently in not scoring goals anyway, or not conceding many goals. But now with how good we are going forward with some of the players that we are seeing right now, Lorenzo Luca is absolutely incredible. Jeremy Pino is just next level amazing. And of course, we've got the youngsters coming through, the likes of Adriano who played a lot last season for the very first time. Should still play quite a lot because obviously Goretzka is fairly old. And Damien, 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 Damien being our key player now. An incredible player picked up for about £4 million years and years ago. So we're going to simulate this. But before we do, today's video is sponsored by Spitch. And it's the last chance you get to win some fantastic prizes this weekend. Yes, yeah, Spitch is sponsoring today's video. And if you book a pitch with Spitch in the Premier League, you get a chance of winning some fantastic prizes. Premier League jerseys of your choice, Beats headphones, Apple earpods, and even an Apple watch. Yes, so many prizes that you can win for free because signing up to Spitch is free. The link at the top of the description. You do, however, have to be from the UK or Ireland. Yeah. Bummer. Unfortunately for everybody else who's abroad, I appreciate you watching. Unfortunately, you cannot win these prizes with Spitch. You also have to be 18 years of age or over. So all of you guys who are slightly underneath, again, I do apologize. But for everybody who is from the UK and Ireland and is over 18 or 18 or over, you've hit the jackpot, my friend, because for free, you can sign up to Spitch and you could get a chance to win some fantastic prizes this weekend. Yes, if you're in the top 10, you win some fantastic prizes. But follow Going on, you can still win plenty of money. I've won money using this app, and I also have a community league underneath the first link. You'll see my link, and why my link is down there is because you can join my league. It's a community league, mega dads in it. There's so many other people in it as well, and we can have some fantastic fun going towards the end of the season and hopefully throughout and beyond into next season if you'd like to stay with us through Spitch. All the statistical analysis is on the app as well, so you don't have to leave the app to find the players that you want, and it doesn't matter if you're joining halfway through the season, it's a week-by-week -week basis that you can win fantastic prizes, money, and join in and have some fun. So thank you very much to everybody who's been signed up to Spitch, I really do appreciate it, and thank you to Spitch for sponsoring today's video. It really does help support the channel if you click the link and you join, and remember it's free and you will have some fun. Thank you very much. Okay, 1st of February, we're in second place. We're four points behind Barcelona. Yeah, so they are very good. They've only lost one game. We've lost five. Jesus. But we've only drew one. So we've got the same amount of wins. They've just dropped a lot of points from those draws. It looks like to me that they're struggling to score the goals, but they're not conceding any, and we're the opposite. We probably are conceding a lot. I mean, yeah, 4-0 loss to Almeria. Uh, sorry? A 4-0 loss? to Almeria. They're down in 15th place. That's shocking. That is really bad. Uh, Barcelona have beaten us twice already as well. Bilbao beat us 2-0. It does look like that we can score the goals because we have by far and large the most goals in the league by 65. Uh, Real Madrid are second there with 51. But yeah, we're conceding 26. So defensively, we're not doing as well as what we were last or previous seasons, but we are scoring uh, a load of goals, which... It makes sense, I guess. We've scored so many goals. We've we most tackles, which means we're high pressing that tackle harder. I told you about it, didn't I? But maybe defensively, we are struggling ever so slightly using this tactic, which I, I don't know. It could be because we don't have the knife players. It could be because we are so attack minded that we will leak some goals. But I'm, I'm I'm okay with it. Competitions. We are through the first round knockout, but we are against Manchester United. That could be a tricky game. Think what? 
Pep Guardiola's there. Pep Guardiola is the manager of Manchester United. Who seen that coming? After Ralph Ranić left, uh, we had Zinedine Zidane join, which I don't think will be happening in real life. Pep Guardiola has just joined. He's 199 days after six years of Zidane, who, who resigned. Good, might have been on his own terms. That's fantastic. Is he in a job now? Manager of Juve. Wow. Got back to his old club. Fair enough. Uh, but now we have Pep Guardiola. Who was manager of Juve? Oh my God, it's a switcheroo. It's the old switcheroo. And he was at Liverpool and he was at Spain. Pep Guardiola is a mercenary manager. That's what's happened there. That's fantastic. All right, we need to blow away from this. Let's come away from this because we've got them in the Champions League. So group stage-wise, then, I'm guessing we finish second. No, we finished top. They finished second. Manchester. Oh, they finished second behind Barcelona, who yet again didn't actually lose any games, barely conceding goals. So we actually defeated Bayern Munich to, I mean, we lost to Monaco away and we lost at home to Bayern Munich, but we beat them away in a 2-1 win. 4-0 against Monaco. Woo! Wow. All right. So we've been quite impressive then. Lorenzo Luke has 26 goals this se season. Damien has 15. He is wanted though. Now, transfer-wise, we still got 27 million in there. Nobody else has signed. Only a couple of loan deals going out and Balo is now leaving. He hasn't played a lot since we signed him from Manchester United, I think it was. Yeah, on a free transfer. Barely played him. We decided not to, to spend any money. I mean, I guess we're doing okay. We don't necessarily need any players. Just when you got it, you might as well, I guess. I don't know. So Adriano's had a good season, but Jeremy Pino, a 7.93 average rating, 15 goals and 16 assists. Oh, that's insane. Okay. Let's simulate towards the end of the season now and see how we do. Okay, we're here at the end of the season and oh, we lost the title by 10 points. 10 points. Lorenzo Lucas scored 30. Who is that scoring 33 for Valencia? He is not even that good. 6'4", he's a very towering figure, but he's not that good. Finishing of only 12. He looks more of a creator than a goal scorer, but somehow he has scored 33 goals this season. And I think for one of the first times since we've been doing this, Lorenzo Luca has not won the Golden Boot. Jeremy Pino with a 7.97, that was very impressive, 18 assists and the most uh, man of the matches. Karnaseki actually got the second most clean sheets, despite us obviously conceding quite a lot. We had the exact same goal difference eventually with Barcelona, but I mean, when they only lose one game against Valencia, yeah, we're not going to be able to catch them. 97 points in total is very impressive indeed. They are turning into a massive powerhouse under Gallardo, and Ronald Arojo is still their key player. They're just playing impressively, I guess. Like, obviously, tactically, they've got it down to a T. Sociedad are still second, uh, still third, sorry, and Valencia are fourth. Espanyol are fifth, Real Madrid down in sixth, Atletico Madrid are down in 15th. Verissimo is their manager. They don't have like any of the famous players that we know and love still almost 10 years into the future. That is weird, but Champions League, how do we do? Semi-finalists. We are the semi-finalists. We are knocked out by PSG as a trophyless season who lost to Manchester City in the final. They were the holders too. Oh, so first round knockout stage. Then we beat Manchester United on penalties. Wow. Okay, quarterfinals. We come up against Chelsea. Two English teams knocked them both out. Sent them packing. We only spoke about how powerful the English clubs are a couple of episodes ago. And this proves that they are beatable. But unfortunately, there's so many of them. Whereas you look at the German League, as if you overcome Bayern Munich, Dortmund, if you can overcome Bayern Munich, you can tend to beat Dortmund quite easily. If you can overcome Juve, every now and then Inter Milan and AC Milan are quite good. But ten, nine times out of ten, you should better beat them more. France, PSG, after that, nobody. Spain, very much the similar with, with England, I guess. you got Barcelona and Real Madrid, but one of them tames to, to drop off. The other one seems to excel, in our case, Barcelona. But the English teams are so overpowered. There tends to be four or five of them every single time, depending on how well Arsenal do under Arteta in the first few years. But it's always Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea and Manchester United. And then that fifth one of Arsenal, whether they do all right. But here we go. We defeated two. We get to the semi-final. We cannot give no more. We've lost 5-1 on aggregate to PSG. And then in the final, Manchester City beat PSG um, with, the, obviously, Yusuf Makuku, who is absolutely destroying people. Oh, so gutted. 39 goals from Lorenzo Luca is very impressive, but not as impressive as 25 goals and assists from Jeremy Pino. 20 goals and 13 assists for Damien, and 17 and 16 assists for Adriano. 
Goretzka's still playing 43 games or 44 games, 47 in total, so don't need to panic with there. He's obviously played very well and can play in the DM role, which I like as well about him. And we've got some fantastic performance from players like Barona too. We go by average Ray and he's third there. Calvin Ramsey, the other fullback who seems to be playing quite a lot, 7.35. He has been incredible for us too. Uh, the young Scottish player at the start of the game, pick him up. He could be crucial for you. Nagalo's played a fairly big part as well because when he has played, he's played amazingly. And it looks like as well, he could have been playing him like different positions, maybe CDM. Uh, so he's been crucial in that. But Claudio has been really missing out. Uh, a new youngster that we've brought into the team, not played that many games. Pau Torres still playing fairly amount. Adriano, yeah, I mean, it's a great season. We just couldn't do it, I guess. Couldn't catch Barcelona, couldn't overthrow the third elite team that we managed to come up against in the Champions League. And if we did, we would have come up against Yusuf Makuku's Manchester City. So there we have it. We have one season left in our new stadium. One season left to win the Champions League. That'll be tomorrow. I hope you check it out. Same time tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.